Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Ezekiel, picking up in chapter 24 tonight. We're going to have another chapter centered around Jerusalem. As we have multiple chapters in this book of Ezekiel. And remember, that's like the main spot for the prophecy of the end times. That's where Satan is going to set up his throne when he arrives as the false Christ. And yes, we need to be paying attention to the events that go on in the world, of course. And, but you don't ever want to forget that the main spot is Jerusalem. And we learn in chapter 16 how much God loves Jerusalem. He made an everlasting covenant. And um, it's very important to understand. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. All right, pick it up. Ezekiel chapter 24. Verse 1, and it reads, Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, first of all, so this is the ninth year that Zedekiah has been reigning. And remember, he's kind of like the puppet king under Nebuchadnezzar. Jehoiakim was taken into captivity for the ninth year now because when Jehoiakim was taken, that's when Zedekiah became the new king. And you have second witnesses. You'll get some more details about this day and about these details that lead up in Jeremiah chapter 52, Jeremiah chapter 39, and 2 Kings chapter 25. You'll get some more details there. And of course, God's word always proves itself. You have the second and third witnesses. I also do want to mention to you briefly Zechariah chapter 8, where it mentions the, the fast of the tenth month as well as some other months there. Verse 2, And those are fasts that were not appointed by God but were appointed by man in Zechariah chapter 8. Remember, you don't follow traditions of men. You follow God and His word. Verse 2, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of this same day. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this day. So the time's coming for the third and final siege of the king of Babylon to where Jerusalem is just going to be completely taken over. Remember, he already has taken Jehoiakim and some captive, and then Jehoiakim and some captive. But now the third and final siege is coming to where the city is just going to be completely taken over. Verse 3, And utter a parable unto the rebellious house, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. You might remind you of Ezekiel chapter 11 that we studied not too long ago. Verse 4, Gather the pieces thereof into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. What we have in this parable is the pot being symbolic of Jerusalem, and those that are in the pot, the inhabitants thereof, and even the choice, even people who might think they're so high and mighty, they might think they're so great. Like in verse 5, take the choice of the flock and burn also the bones under it. You might think about what Josiah did in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 16. And make it boil well and let them see the bones of it therein. And saying the, the bones and everything, it's going to be seethed, boiled so much, the meat is going to fall right off the bone. And of course, this is once again a parable. It's symbolic of just how great the destruction of Jerusalem is going to be. And as you know, what's the prophecy? Who's the king of Babylon of the end times? It's Satan, as you know from Isaiah chapter 14. Lucifer, when he will come as the false Christ. But don't ever forget how Satan is going to destroy. Daniel chapter 8 verse 25, He by peace shall destroy many. And that deception is going to be so incredible that almost the entire world is going to be deceived and believe that He is God and worship Him. Verse 6, Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, and of course that's Jerusalem, 
to the pot whose scum, that means the rust, is therein, and whose scum is not gone out of it. Bring it out piece by piece. Let no lot fall upon it. I mean, it's just going to be completely taken over. And remember, God, He sent prophets rising up early, bringing the truth. He tried correction and just didn't work. They just kept doing evil. Verse 7, For her blood is in the midst of her. She set it up on the top of a rock. She poured it upon the ground. Or she poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust. I mean, right out there in the open, no shame. A couple things about this rock. First of all, you know from Deuteronomy 32, the Song of Moses, their rock is not as our rock. Our rock is Jesus Christ. Satan is the false rock. Make note of Numbers chapter 24, verse 21, where it says, He looked on the Kenites. It says, Strong is thy dwelling place. Thou puttest thy neck in a thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Then it goes on the next verse to say, The Kenites shall be wasted. And where else is it? Well, let's read another verse, verse 8. That it might cause fury to come up, to take vengeance. I have set her blood upon the top of a rock, that it should not be covered. God knows you can't hide anything from God. And his vengeance is going to come down on the wickedness of Jerusalem. Verse 9, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I will even make the pile for the fire great. Now, I want to read, turn with me to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 23. You have many woes in this Matthew 23, and there, there's even an appendix in your companion Bible that it, it's comparing the woes in this Matthew chapter 23, um, it's comparing it to the, the Beatitudes of Matthew chapter 5. Very interesting. But remember, what's the subject? Jerusalem. Let's pick it up. Um, Matthew chapter 23, verse 29. And it reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Do you remember 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, how the Kenites were even scribes? Because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Well, who is that? Verse 32, Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, a generation of vipers, that word generation in the Greek is genema. It means the offspring. How can you escape the damnation of hell? They would escape that if they would believe in Jesus Christ. They have that opportunity. 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, sent you real scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. And of course, there was no more wicked act done than the crucifixion of our Savior, Jesus Christ, how they nailed our Savior to the cross. His blood was shed. But don't ever forget, it's through that blood, through His crucifixion and resurrection, that if you believe in Him, you will receive eternal life. And some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues, even taking you to the prophecy of when God's elect are delivered up, Mark 13, to the synagogue of Satan, when you stand against the false Christ, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaius, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar." Now, ye serpents, you know who the serpent is, right? Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. The serpent is Satan. It's just one of his names. And he was in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't some snake in the garden. It was Satan himself. And it says here how upon you come all the righteous blood from righteous Abel. Well, who killed Abel? Cain did, of course. Do you remember what it says in 1 John chapter 3, I believe it's verse 12? It says, Cain was of the wicked one. Verse 36, Verily I say unto you, All these things shall come upon this generation. 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, 
How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and you know that will ultimately be fulfilled when the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet is there in Jerusalem. When Satan arrives as the false Christ. And uh, let's go another verse 39. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We're going to go back to Ezekiel and remember that um, Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. It says, When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place where it ought not. It says, You flee Judea. And Satan will set up his throne in Jerusalem. Another, and remember, that, that's God's favorite place, Jerusalem. So of course that's where Satan's going to set up his throne. We can never forget. We have to keep our eyes on Jerusalem. Another chapter I'm going to briefly mention where it mentions Jerusalem is uh, Psalm chapter 79, which is so fantastic because it even gives you a second witness and prophecy of Revelation chapter 11 and the two witnesses. It's fantastic. So now let's go back Ezekiel chapter 24. Picking it back up, verse 10. And it reads, Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. And remember Hebrews chapter 12, the last verse, God is a consuming fire. The fire destroys the wicked, but it has no bad effect at all on those who serve Jesus Christ. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3, verse 11. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. You're going to make it so hot, not only is all the bones and the flesh just going to consume on the inside, you're going to burn it so much that the rust just pops off. And so what was this all about? The wrath of God. The coming of the king of Babylon, who was Nebuchadnezzar in Ezekiel's time. But it's Satan when in the final prophecy of it. And the greatest affliction, the greatest tribulation of all time, like you see in Mark 13 and Matthew 24. Verse, but if you have the seal of God in your forehead, if you study to show yourself approved, you're going to be ready and you won't be deceived. Verse 12. She hath wearied herself with lies, and her great scum went not forth out of her. Her scum shall be in the fire. You remember in G when Jesus was speaking in John chapter 8, verse 44, He said, Ye are of your father the devil. He was a liar and he's the father of it. So you know who he was talking to, right? Verse 13. And thy filthiness is lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou wast not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. God's wrath's going to come down. And once again, he sent the prophets. He tried to do everything he could to pull them out of evil, but they just wouldn't. So yeah, the wrath's coming down. 14. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent. According to thy ways and according to thy doing shall they judge thee saith the Lord God. So it's because of their pure evil. It's not like this has happened for no reason, but according to their ways. 15. Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Now what we have here, this the desire of Ezekiel's eyes is saying that his wife is going to die but it's a, it's a lesson teaching them what it's going to be like when Jerusalem falls. And that's all going to be explained. Verse 17. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips. You keep speaking truth, and eat not the bread of men. 
So first of all, when Satan's here as the false Christ, and he's deceiving the whole world, yeah, it's going to be the saddest thing ever, but they had the Bible. They could have studied it. Don't go making some big show about it. Just, just keep right on going. And how it says, the tire on thy head, shoes upon thy feet. You know what that is for us, don't you? The armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, how you have the helmet of salvation. You have your shoot prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And there's a lot more to that gospel armor. Your loins go about with truth and there's still more than that. You've got to have that armor on at all times. And eat not the bread of men. And just like you kind of see today when there's a funeral, everyone's bringing food, you know. What's well, saying, when, when that morning time comes, when your wife dies, don't, don't eat the morning bread that people are bringing. And when this is, once again, this is teaching about Jerusalem as it's going to explain. But also, you don't eat the bread of men. You do not believe man's doctrine. You don't believe man's teaching. If they can't prove it in the Bible, why would you believe it? We partake of the bread of life, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His teachings, not man's teachings. Verse 18, So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. He did exactly as he was commanded, as we always better do, and that includes during the tribulation of the false Christ. We will have the two witnesses guiding us during that time, and we better do exactly as God commands. How in the morning, you might think about in Acts chapter 2, how it was in the morning about 9 a.m. on Pentecost Day when that cloven tongue of fire came upon them. And that Pentecostal tongue, it needs no interpreter. It's understood in every language all at one time. Only God can do that. 19. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us, that thou doest so? That they're saying, Explain to me, your, your wife died and you're not even mourning about it? What's this about? 20. Then I answered them, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary. Why? Because Satan's going to sit there. He's going to sit in the holy place of Matthew 24, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. He's going to sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that happens before we are gathered together unto Jesus Christ. The excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. And once well, I get saying, the desire of their eyes was Jerusalem. It's going to fall. It's going to be profane. And you see, if you don't teach your children the truth of Jesus Christ about the true Christ, teach them the difference between the true and the false, if they don't know that, they're going to be deceived. And like it says, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19, teach your children. And you read that verse for yourself, it makes it very clear. You teach them often. You plant those seeds. Verse 20. And ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. You don't partake in some big show of sadness, some funeral. Why? Because they had it coming to them. They partook of wickedness. They wouldn't listen to God. So God's not going to put up with, oh, woe is me. Because it's be they had it coming to them. 23. And your tires shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn to one toward another. Even though it's not going to be some huge big show, you're going to be pining away for your iniquities. You are going to be devastated. Um, imagine being a Christian for decades, your whole life. And you went to church all the time, but you did a lot of stuff, but the Word of God wasn't really taught there. And then you end up getting deceived and you realize you were worshiping Satan. What could be worse than that? You see in Revelation chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, the great men and the mighty men, they're going to be hiding themselves in the dens and the rocks, just wishing that mountains would fall on them. It's going to be a terrible time for many. Also that pine away. 
you would, uh, you would see, first of all, make note of Leviticus chapter 26, about verse 19. But also you'll see in the Strong's Concordance that word can even mean to melt. You might think about um, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 24. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. Make note of Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7. According to all that he hath done, shall ye do. So you think Ezekiel is a pretty important book to study? Yeah, I would say so, as they all are, of course. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. It's all going to come to pass exactly as God said it was going to happen. Just as the deception of the false Christ will come to pass exactly as God told us over and over and over. Verse 25, Also thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, talking about Jerusalem, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters? And what do you set your mind on? We truly set our mind on God and His Word. You don't let things distract you. You always put God first. And yes, we watch current events. We watch Jerusalem. But what we truly set our mind on is our Heavenly Father, the Savior Jesus Christ, and God's Word. So we know how to be pleasing to Him. And God's Word, it teaches you how to be happy, how to be successful, how to be blessed. It's truly the secret to life. I mean, it is. People would search their whole life how to be successful and all that. What if they just studied God's Word? Where it's written so simple that you know how to be happy and how to be blessed. You know how to have eternal life by believing in Jesus Christ. And you learn how you're to stand against the false Christ. 26. That he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears. In Ezekiel's time, there would be one that would escape. And remember, Ezekiel had, had already been taken into captivity. That, the very start of the book of Ezekiel lets you know he's already in captivity. He, got, he was already taken. But it's saying one's going to escape from that final siege and come and tell and let you know what's going on. And we'll see that come to pass in Ezekiel chapter 33, about verse 21. But that, that whole idea of escape is very fascinating in itself. We did a whole study one time called Escaped. You might remember how even in Job chapter 1, one who had, uh, they, they were escaped. And they, they kept coming and telling Job what was going on. Verse 27. In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him which is escaped. And thou shalt speak and be no more dumb. And thou shalt be a sign unto them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. It's interesting in these next few chapters, several chapters, there's going to be a great deal about the fallout with other nations. But think about that for a second, how that one who escapes is going to come tell you what's going on. Said Ezekiel's mouth is going to be opened. Think about Acts chapter 2 once again. I'll mention verse 17 where it says, um, Old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. And that's going to happen to God's elect during the tribulation of the false Christ. You're going to know exactly what to do every step of the way. And you're going to know when it's time for you to be delivered up. When it's time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, for your mouth to be opened, so that Pentecostal tongue will be spoken, so the gospel can be published to the world. As you see in Mark chapter 13, see that's your destiny, so the world can hear the truth, because it's not you that speaks. It says, don't even premeditate what you will say. It's not you that speaks, but the Holy Spirit will speak through you. That's how important your job is. So many people who had been deceived, they can hear the truth. And so they can come out of it. So don't underestimate how important it is to study. How important it is to prepare. How important it is to remember Jerusalem. How that's where the false one's going to set up his throne. You stand against him. Uh, that Zechariah chapter 14, it, does, it connects pretty well with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, where you know when the seventh trumpet sounds and Jesus Christ returns, everyone's changed into a spiritual and incorruptible body. So if we're still in the flesh, you know that Jesus Christ has not returned. Stick to God's word, not false doctrine. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father. 
We thank you so much for your word in this place you've given us. We can teach your word. We ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share it with others. We ask you for the understanding of prophecy, and thank you so much, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. This was recorded in the year 2023 at Smyrna Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.